Anyways, man, thanks for coming in and uh, yeah, hanging man. out with me a little bit here. Uh, I'm excited to give you uh, and have the conversation and, and give you the chance to explain this mysterious practice <clears throat> of Kundalini Yoga, which is just this esoteric, stoic-esque, just outlandish thing <laughs> that only a few gravitate towards and uh to have someone that has a, a deep knowledge base on it come in uh and speak on a little bit so thank you for being here bro thanks i uh it's a pleasure i'm, I'm really excited to be on the show um yeah yeah kundalini yoga it's um it's something that uh it's kind of hard to explain um you know put it into a box but uh for me kundalini yoga is uh a yoga of awareness mm. and you keep you constantly hear people talking about kundalini yoga as being the yoga of awareness um how many different yogas are there i think there's about 22 to 23 different types of yoga Damn. yeah there's about 22 23 is there like a main three or four or something like that i think um <laughs> there's there's just a mix there's a yeah. mix and uh, what kundalini yoga it's kind of a hogposh of all these different types of yoga and um it takes a lot of um it takes some of the most powerful meditations and sequences from all these different types of yoga and combines it into one system mm -hmm. um it's based in sikh dharma and um what is sikh dharma well sikh dharma is you know the sikh faith mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it incorporates a lot of um you know knowledge from the gurus and uh, the ten sikh gurus but it also incorporates a lot of mantra and sound you know, and um, Ashtanga rhythm mm -hmm. and beats uh, incorporates meditation, pranayama, breath, um, repetitive time, vigorous movement, and sometimes all these things at once. And mm -hmm. it can be really, really uh, intense. Intense. Yeah, really intense. strenuous. Stren super like, strenuous. Like yeah. Kundalini yoga, like is a is a workout. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's not just you know lotus pose and just. No, yeah. no, no. It's it's some new. It's some next level shit. Straight up. Totally the next level. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like the most yeah. athletic version of yoga, and I don't mean to like. Man, being flexible and mo and having a great level of mobility is yeah. definitely an aspect of athleticism. But like, I'm just talking about like movement and sweating and breathing. It's like it's so intense. People don't understand how hard it is to like just do breath of fire. Like, do breath of fire for three minutes. That's exhausting. Yeah, yeah. And then you finish, and you're just, oh my god, right? Yeah, it yeah, it's it was it was it was really interesting. Like, I mean, it's compared to other types of yoga. It's it's really athletic. It's really dynamic, and you you just you just it just morphs to whoever's practicing it so if you're somebody who's really creative you know you like to sing you like to dance there's there's a huge aspect of that uh of, of that that you were where you just practice it there's lots of singing there's lots of movement in mm -hmm. it and it just morphs to you but if you're somebody who's really athletic you know you like sports you like to go hard you like to push yourself it's something that really just gets you going it pumps up your nervous system and just um it really helps you realize your full potential because you there's there's no wall. It shows you your wall, and you just find that wall, and you smash through. Smash it. the hell you out of it. Smash right through it. And yeah. Yeah. It's it's it just it, yeah. It really just morphs to the person. You know. That's really interesting. So you have like I know you you're working out of uh, Oxygen Yoga. Yeah. And you're yeah. you have your uh, clients out of there as well. You have a private practice, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you have a lot of uh, a wide array of people that you work with. Mm -hmm. So you know, for for me, for instance, like when we had our sessions. It was like, it like pivoted me a little bit. Like, well, like I remember when we first sat down, I was so busy and I'm still busy, but I'm in a, just in a different way where it's just kind of like, there's yeah. a busy in terms of like, you're just running on the treadmill mm -hmm. and there's a busy of like, you're just operating on a really high frequency and, yeah. and working on a really high level. Um, so for me, it was a very much of a, just a, a, a breakthrough, just like a mental thing where it's like just the, what I took away from it. Cause I didn't know what to take. I didn't know what I was going to get going into it. So what I took away from it was like, oh, okay, I got to a place. <clears throat> it's the same thing when you're working out and you're like, Oh, I'm dead. I can't do one more rep. I can't do one more rep. And then you end up doing three more minutes of reps and you're like, oh, I didn't even know I could get to this place, you know? And it's just this flow of electricity that just mm -hmm. energizes you for 48, I don't know, 72 hours. It was just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think when you, uh, when you do this type of, when you do this type of yoga, it really, it really activates your nervous system. It really, it really, it really pushes you to the point where, where your mind's saying, I want to quit. I want to quit. But as long as you follow the instructions of the teacher and, and execute the breath while you're moving 
um, vigorously and continuously, uh, it will carry you through that, through that, mm-hmm. through that, that state where you want to quit when you, when you hit that wall and you're like, I got to give up. Um, the other day I was in teacher training and we were doing, um, we were doing some sets, um, and the sets we were doing were probably about 11 minutes long. So we had to hold demanding postures for like 11 minutes. My God. And I remember just sitting there. I remember just sitting there, just looking around, you know, and I was working, I was, I was in class with about 50 people and a lot of them were women. Um, and uh really strong and i looked at everybody else i'm shaking i'm about to cry and uh <laughs> i'm 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 literally like my i'm shaking i'm i'm just doing this i'm like fuck how long do i got to hold this thing for right but my breath's just kicking my breath's just kicking and i'm like i'm like i can do it i can do it but my mind starts playing all these tricks on me like no no you can't you can't you can't you can't but i focus on the breath and i focus on the sound and i focus on the rhythm and it just carries me through that place and uh, eventually, you know, you get to the end and you have that, that amazing release Crazy. and you're just like, oh, that's why I did that, you know, and you're just in that place that just that higher place, that higher frequency. That's like your totally. Yeah. Like your your higher self, you know, it's like a lot of the times when I'm doing other forms of movement and breath, I'll get to a, a place of fatigue and I will use anger to get past it. Mm. Um, just rage and try to find a way to just muster up emotion that'll push me past it versus in this form of exercise and movement it was just like embracing it Mm -hmm. rather than fighting it so it's like you know maybe i'm running laps or maybe i'm doing sprints or maybe i'm in the weight room or even just getting shots up and it's just like i'm trying to just pound this brick wall and just destroy this thing versus it's almost like you're, you feel this wave of, I mean, you have to understand like you're doing a movement and doing full inhale and, and exhalations for five minutes or six minutes or something like that. And it's just like your body is shaking. Your muscles can't take it. You're not used to this. And you're just pushing, 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 pushing blood and breath <clears throat> into the area. And it's literally like you just lose control of your body for a second. But rather <laughs> than fighting it, it was just kind of like a wave of, of water essentially and you were just like okay every mm-hmm. part of my body hurts but i'm just experiencing this feeling not fighting it it was really mm-hmm. weird really weird experience it's it's really cool that you said that because i mean i mean when you start to like practice it you're you're you get into a posture where you have to you have to do something repetitively over and over and over again it might be the easiest thing to do but as you keep doing it as you keep doing it it starts to burn it starts to hurt and you start to create this energy inside of the body and the breath and the energy start to create the energy of your nervous system starts to mix with the energy of your glands. Mm. Um, I mean, before I get into that, like, like what Kundalini energy is, it's your, it's your creative potential, right? And it, it lies dormant at the base of your spine. And, um, some people call that the soul. Some people call that the higher self, Shakti, um, the divine feminine. Um, and what your, what Kundalini yoga does is it activates and raises this energy up the spine through the chakras into mm-hmm. the crown chakra so that you can experience higher states of consciousness, um, a deep awareness, a deep physical awareness, a deep spiritual awareness, but a really deep emotional awareness. And I would even say a moral awareness, which is, wow. which, which is, um, and I can get, I'll get, I can get into that a little later, but, um, once you kind of raise this energy, you do it through vigorous, repetitive movement and breath. The breath helps you raise the energy, the movement helps build fire inside the body. And as the, as the energy comes up, as the, movement, as the energy starts to flow through the body, it starts to move through your blockages. And it starts to burn. It starts to hurt. It's, it's, it's really, in essence, a self-diagnostic tool. So you can find where your blocks are. You go back. You do the same exercise the next day. You start moving through the same block. It's a little easier. Then you go back and do the third day. And then, you know eventually that block goes away. And how it works is that when you remove that block, you'll see that that shift in consciousness in your external reality it's really it's it's a really cool science because the more you let go the more you move out of your body the more space the more space you create and the more good you let in it's a weird feeling yeah so but in order to in order to let that go you have to surrender to that to that heat and to that fire that's coming inside of you you can feel it moving through your blockages kind of like Kind of like water, or like taking a wa- like taking the air into a balloon. You know, it's going to expand that balloon. So this energy starts to move. It starts to expand the muscle. Starts to move through the muscle, move through the joints, move through the ligaments, uh, move through the cells, and create lots of heat. Mm-hmm. And it just it just it's its own beast. It's crazy. I, it's yeah. So you have 
through this practice, you probably have, um, at least from my perspective, I was attracted to it because of the human opt- optimization type. Um, it's like, okay, I can activate my body and my cells and my breath and my blood and my muscles in a different way. Like I'd never, ever, ever even tried a handstand that one time. And then you just started doing handstands and I was like, man, fuck this guy. I can do a handstand. Yeah. <laughs> and I like popped up for like three, four seconds, man. Yeah. I haven't, I literally, since Carmel came on the podcast, I started to try to do handstands again. And now yeah. like just now after like a month of trying, I've been able to get to like three, four seconds the same time when we did it that first time just out of nowhere, right? Yeah. So you have a different understanding of your body yeah like you can just like if right right, right now i don't feel my ankles you know what i'm saying like <laughs> yeah, i don't feel yeah. my ankles but if i'm sitting here yeah. and i just did a session a 60 minute session I'll, I'll feel my ankles i'll feel my toes i'll feel my pinkies yeah. i'll feel every part of me so like if you hop up in a handstand it's just like oh you can find yeah. the balance very very fine i find myself walking better yeah and stuff like that it's just like you have more joint muscle exoskeleton awareness of movement it's fucking weird what when you when you take that energy and you move it up the spine i mean i mean i saw like you had carmel rodriguez on here Mm -hmm. and she moves like a lot of athletes you know especially people that are doing animal type of movement and um they really know how bear crawls yeah you totally start to activate that flow of energy um and um what kundalini yoga does is it it's it's really strategic it's not just like you do the yoga and and you know let the energy do its thing the the kriyas kriyas are um uh, specific uh sets that are designed to um designed to create like a specific predictable state of state a new like um, a set of awareness can you mean an example like um let's say i wake up in the morning everyone wants to talk about mindset you know like how do i get charged in the morning or how do i get pumped in the morning um, I'll wake up in the morning and I'll say, who do I need to be today? You know, um, what I might be feeling shitty. I might've had a couple losses, you know, I might've lost a couple of deals or I might've, you know, uh, screwed up a couple of things and, you know, I might be feeling like a loser or something. So I'm like, so I say, so what I'll do is I'll say, you know what? I need to feel like a winner today. I need to, I need to feel victory. I literally need to feel the emotion of victory, right? What does victory feel like? Victory to me feels like you know, scoring a goal in soccer or, or, or hitting a game winning shot. That's what victory feels like to me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how can you create that emotional state when, you know, you're not playing sports? You know, how do you create that emotional state like just like this? So I'll do a Kundalini Kriya and it will show me how to create that emotional state. I can mm-hmm. literally put myself into that state of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Uh, at, and it only takes me anywhere from like, sometimes it might take me 30 minutes, sometimes it might take me an hour, but you can ride that for the whole, for two days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're trying to create a state of, uh, let's say confidence, for yeah. instance, um, <clears throat> what, are, what are some of the movements that you would use to activate that state of mind versus for instance, like, you know, I'll wake up one day and I'll think, well, you know, today I'm always so, f- I'm always so focused. I want to maybe feel empathy today or mm. something like that. Like what, what are some of the things you try to <clears throat> activate? You know, it could be for confidence or empathy or whatever. How do you try to get to that emotion? Okay. So for like, um, so for confidence, I think confidence and, and empathy come from the heart, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of people are blocked in this area, right? And, you know, shoulders come forward, um, rib cage is tight diaphragm the rib cage is tight the diaphragm doesn't open up as, as much as it could so you're not really taking these big powerful breaths so you've mm-hmm. got to kind of work on opening up the diaphragm work opening up the rib cage and create more space in there but i think like a movement would be just punching yeah just keep punching keep punching burn burn stuff like this mm-hmm. for five minutes six minutes inhaling exhale with breathing of, with breath of fire mm-hmm. these type of movements create a lot of space in the rib cage and when you release that space well, the heart center, they call this the heart chakra. You begin to feel deep, deep empathy, deep connection, mm-hmm. um, deep courage, lots of courage, you know? So yeah, those mm-hmm. are the moves that I would, I would do. Okay, cool. So I've added, uh, in the morning, if I don't go work out and if I just go, uh, straight to the office or I go, you know, straight into work, whatever work is that day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm generally the first one up in the house and I'll <coughs> make sure to do some type of movement with that squats, push ups. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll do some sort of, some sort of, I'm just trying to like release and energize my spine in some way, my hips, these things get really tight for me really easily. Mm-hmm. And then I'll add in at the end, I'll add meditation. But before I do meditation, I'll add in breath 
breath of fire mm -hmm. in different ways, different movements. Or oh, and I'll add in uh, box breathing. Um, I don't know if you're familiar. Box Tell breathing. me about it. Tell box me. breathing is just. Um, Essentially, it's just a five-second deep inhale, mm -hmm. just through the nose, five seconds. Hold for five seconds. Exhale, five seconds. Mm -hmm. No breath, five seconds. And you repeat that for three to five minutes. And I don't know, so since our sessions, since my sessions with you, I kind of went a little bit deeper into the breath work, and I found some, you know, different people that were doing some different things. And I tried to, like, continue mm -hmm. to try different things and find methods that would work for me mm -hmm. um, so I could be – it was all in an effort <clears throat> to increase – um, uh, just the level of concentration I could have in meditation, right? So I could have a better med meditative state because I found if I did that, I would just release and then I could be calm for five, 10 minutes, right? And if I didn't do that, <laughs> I'd, I'd have a shitty meditation, right? Yeah. Um, what from a physiological standpoint, what is that breath, like breath of fire, for instance, what is that actually doing to me? So the breath of fire, what it's really doing is it's, Active, sorry, excuse me. Sorry, explain breath of fire for those so that don't know. Breath of fire is a short inhale and exhalation through the nose. Mm -hmm. And on the exhale, you just draw you, you draw the navel back towards the spine. It's a mm -hmm. quick mm -hmm. and the inhale happens automatically when you release the when you release the navel. And you do it about uh, it's about two to three breaths per second. And what breath of fire does is it really just really just activates the power of the nerve like the, it really just activates um that chi, that fire, that life force inside of you, it starts to pump it, starts to move it up. It also replenishes your blood. Mm -hmm. it, it puts more oxygen into the blood. And, you know, on a physical, on a physiological point of view, um, like I don't know the science too much. Like I don't really want to get into the science don't too worry, much. Don't worry, don't worry. I don't, I don't want to say something that's kind of like, uh, um, you know, incorrect. But what it really helps to do is, I think it um, really helps to reoxygenize the blood. Yeah, totally. And move, um, I think it's the cortisol out of it. Yeah. And so that you can, you know, release that stress, and you could just feel more relaxed. And it just, it just brings more fire, more heat into the body, and really um, helps, just on a, on an esoteric level, just move the waves of the mind, like just calm the waves of the mind, just clear them out, and give you kind of like a fresh start. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also it's a powerful breath because it helps you, you can do it uh, in really difficult movements. You know, you can, and when, when things get tough, it really helps you move the heat out of your body. Mm -hmm. It really helps to kind of just center yourself when you're doing something that involves uh, high stress. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, if, so, if you're doing like, um, if you come to a point where it's just like, this is such a difficult uh, posture or difficult um, movement, you just, you start kicking the breath of fire and it just gets the air in fast and out fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Helps with lifting. Oh, also yeah. lifting tons. 100%. Uh, definitely gotten way better lifts since starting to be aware of um, just wh where my breathing's at and using breathing exercises before I go into lifting and stuff like that. Mm. It's just like, I don't, I don't know. It's just like I feel like there's all these little tiny little crevasses and different muscles that you just don't really use. Mm. You're just usually use it, utilizing primary muscles. It feels like it just gets the blood to those areas. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I don't know. I literally... It, 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 so Breath of Fire, like, it'll, it's just, it just has, it has so many benefits. Like, um, really does is it activates the power of the navel. And the navel is kind of like your, your abdominal muscles, you know, right where your belly button is. And that's a power center. What it does is it, is it brings in a lot of uh, prana, mm -hmm. life force. And it takes that prana and, 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 and transmutes it to the rest of your body. It charges the chakras. And the chakras are like energy channels that, that are aligned, this, uh, aligned up the spine and the body. And those chakras just... Um, they control our personality, they control our emotional states, right? So what Breath of Fire does is it just brings in that prana and helps realign, helps center, help charge the chakras, you mm -hmm. know? So these are, these are Eastern teachings. Mm -hmm. You're a kid from the West Coast of Canada, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? So yeah. like there's a, there's a disconnect there, you know? Yeah. You, there's obviously a path you've taken to get into this. Cause I, and I want to give a little bit of context to listeners here, like, this is your. This has not been your life trajectory. This is no, something no. that you found yourself in through, you know, a very unique journey. Talk about it a little bit. Um, okay. Well. Um, well, actually, I'm a Vancouver boy. I actually went to Van Tech. Yeah. Right. Oh, right so, down the so, block. Yeah, right down the block. It's my hood. So. Oh, yeah. I brought back memories just kind of being in the neighborhood. Um, so you know, I grew up in the city of Vancouver and I spent a lot of time, you know, um, and I spent some time in Prince George up North. Um, my dad had a car dealership up there and I worked, I worked with them. Um, 
I came back down from Prince George to Vancouver and I was a mortgage broker for some years. And I just realized um, in 2012, I just wasn't, you know, finding, um, I wasn't in, energetically, I wasn't in, in a great, in a great place. Mm-hmm. And I found myself kind of um, falling into like, um, like a slight depression. And I wasn't sure what was going on with me. You know, I'm 40 years old, so I was about 10 years ago. I was, it was about, you know, about about like six years, you know, six years ago, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. And it got to the point where I just started, I just started, um, you know, picking up bad habits and, and, and my personal life was kind of, um, kind of getting rocky and my professional life was starting to get rocky. And I just really wasn't sure what was going on because up until that point, everything was amazing and awesome. But then it was kind of like the universe just shifted on me and I wasn't ready for that shift, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and all this pressure fell on my head and, and failed projects, bad relationships, all these things kind of added up and it just knocked me on my ass. And I was just like, wow, I don't know how to recover from this. And it hit me, it shook me so much that I kind of went, I, I started, I, I ended up having this anxiety and I just did the bare minimum on a daily basis to survive. I was just like, you know, I'm not really, I didn't really know what to do. I didn't really know where to, where I wanted to go. I wasn't happy with my career. I wasn't happy with my life. Um, as a mortgage broker. Well, as a mortgage broker, yeah. But you're you're making some money in that profession. Yeah, but you know, you got it. Your heart has to be into it, and you have to be. Your heart has to be into it. And I found that, I found that I wasn't attracting the right type of people in my life, even clients. Like everything was a fucking everything was a headache. I was just like, why am I why, why am I dealing with these types of clients, or why, you know, why is it not working? And it got to the point where. You know when you when you're trying things in life and you're just trying to get back to where you were and it just feels like you're you're forcing up a shitty shot. You know what I mean? You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you're just like, yeah. "Oh fuck." 10% missed. chance maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but you know, but you know, but you've hit that shot a million times, but it's just like, "Wait a second. Am I getting slower or you know, what, yeah. what am I doing wrong because I've done that a million times, but it's not working." Yeah, I'm not converting. Like, why am I not finishing, right? And um I just tried to figure out and I was just trying to figure out why that uh, I was just trying to figure out like why why are the skills and the things that I used to know that used to work for me aren't working for me anymore. Mm-hmm. And I realized that that times were changing but I wasn't changing with those times. I wasn't shifting, right? And like I wasn't shifting with those patterns. I wasn't I wasn't stepping up and it just caused a disconnect between me and my life and I was just kind of like, "Okay, I need to figure this out." So then I um you know, a couple of years go by and I'm just kind of like you know, I'm just still in the dark, just like praying to something that's like, you know, I need to change. I need something. Yeah, I, need I, need, I need something to shift. And um, the one thing I kept constant was was uh, yoga. Mm-hmm. So I was doing yoga at a commercial yoga studio, and um, it was at the Y Yoga on Broad Street. And uh, I believe I'm a true believer that you got to sweat every day. Totally. But I used to play a lot of competitive sports, but I was carrying. I was. I was holding on to two ACL surgeries. Right. Yeah, so. Can relate, yeah. And it stopped me from kind of um, connecting with. It stopped me from playing the way I wanted to play. And I was a really intense player. So it's almost like I lost that that competitive edge. That that thing that really fired me up. And um, my energy levels were were down. Um, my emotions were down. Mm-hmm. But I still hung on to it with that yoga practice. Right. Um, the yoga that I was practicing was was kind of commercialized. You know, it was for beginners coming in, just like okay, you know, they call it flow yoga, hot yoga, power yoga. I don't even know what they call it nowadays. <laughs> it's so commercial. So, I was just kind of doing that. And um, and one day, um, I had this one one really amazing teacher. Right, he would um, kind of sprinkle in little bits of uh, of, of of like Kundalini yoga techniques. He, like, I didn't know what they were, but he kind of sprinkled them into. So what would he do? Like he'd get you to put your hands up in the air, like in the beginning of class, and he'll get you to just, you know, yeah. clap. And you're like, you know, what is this shit? And, you know, I'm just like, so we're all doing it. We're all doing it. Like, what, what the, what the fuck am I doing this for? And then he'll get you to put your hands together, and you're like, oh, what is, what is that? You know. And yeah. um, one day he got me to do that, and I started feeling this, like, this energetic, this force. And when I was a kid, I used to play with magnets, and I was always pushing magnets. You know, and I was like, what is this invisible force? It really just kind of, you know, made me, made me just wonder. And then. I started feeling this force in that practice and then I closed my eyes and, and as I was moving, I could feel myself in a totally different way. It was almost like I, there was this energy field around me and I was, I was, I knew exactly where my limbs were when I was going, you know, upside down or right or left. And I was just like, what is this feeling? And it started to remind me of, uh, a basketball, 
uh, or of soccer, you know, when I used to win, like that feeling of being a winner yeah. came out when I did that. I was like, what is this, this energetic pulse that I'm feeling? So then I asked him about it and he tell, he told me that if I want to, if I want to feel more of this, you should, I should meditate. And I, so I started meditating and he gave me this technique. Well, he showed me this technique called Vipassana. And, um, you, have you heard of Vipassana? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I have, but please explain. Yeah, what well, is I mean, that? Vipassana is just a, a technique where you, I, I don't want to, say that I, I don't want to really tell the technique i don't want to talk about the technique like i know it but um hey, man listen it's a podcast it's yeah. a license to be yeah wrong. so anyways okay so i was <laughs> practicing this technique called vipassana and it's um you basically just sit in a meditative posture breathe and you bring awareness to the body and you scan the body and it was the first technique that first you know type of meditation that i was it's practicing. a pretty basic meditation practice essentially it's just yeah. sense learning how to feel your body yeah. your breath like just taking account of things yeah and taking your awareness and just kind of like tracing your body and mapping your body but it was the coolest thing because i i i really got into it and uh i remember just locking myself in my my apartment just like okay i want to feel this feeling i want what is this this vibration i was feeling i want to feel more of it so i started um practicing this technique and I just started to wake up like I could just the moment every time I would scan every time that I would scan my body I had to have these emotions and these thoughts come up like trauma um things from the past and the more I would scan my body the more I would remember things things that were holding back things that were disturbing me. and I was like wow this is some pretty powerful shit muscles got memory and then uh yeah exactly muscles definitely got memory and then I started feeling like but then I, I started to open up so much I felt like this 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 cosmic faucet that was on but i didn't know how to turn it off Ooh, cosmic faucet yeah well, now we're getting into the, into yeah. the, into the woo-woo yeah. so, 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 <laughs> yeah. so it was like so it was kind of like i was like i was like this is crazy but then i started to look at my reality that i had created like mm -hmm. my relationships the people around me um types of work type of businesses that i had and i was just like wow and i looked at i was like wait a sec this is a lie. You know, this is bullshit. This is garbage. Like, uh -oh. why did I create this? And I was just like, holy fuck. I was like, I just created this, um, this world around me. That's just not true. And it was all built on, on the shitty belief system. Mm -hmm. You know, it was built from ego and pride. And I was like, I was like, this isn't going to work. But, and I just, and I just realized that I was like, well, this is, this is, this is intense. Cause I was just like, I just realized that my whole life's been kind of manufactured a lie, in, the, in a, a lie. lie right. Yeah. So I was just kind of like, it was kind of a, it was definitely like uh, an awakening and I started to lose it. I was, I started getting manic. I was cutting off all my friends. I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I was like, fuck you and fuck you. And I was just like, <laughs> I just, and everyone's like, this guy's going crazy. And uh, so I went back to my yoga teacher who kind of, you know, who gave me the techniques. And I said to him, I'm like, dude, I'm losing it. And he goes, try Kundalini yoga. And I was like, Hey, what's that? And he's like, he goes, just trust me, just try it out. Yeah. And then I, uh, I remember walking to my first uh, yoga studio. I went over to, it's a yoga studio called uh, Yoga West on West 4th. And um, I walked into the door. I was like, I didn't know what to expect. I walked into the door and I see, I see these two girls and they were wearing all white ones and they're both wearing turbans. And I was just like, and they're white girls, right? Yeah. So I was kind of like, what are you doing? I was just like, I was <laughs> What's like, wrong with you? I was like, I was kind of like, what the fuck? And, um, and there's a lot of emotion in the studio, right? There's a lot of emotion in the studio. And I remember this one girl was crying and the teacher was consoling oh this my girl. Gosh. And I was like, what's going on here? So I literally, I literally just kind of like turned around. I started walking towards the door and, um, something's like, no, you got to stay. You got to, you got to, you got to see this out. Right. So I stayed in the class and, um, I had this amazing teacher and, uh, she's an amazing teacher. And, um, she really just, we, she, we started doing the breath work, started doing breath of fire. We started doing this thing called ego eradicator. What is that? Hold on. Ego eradicator is when you put your hands up in the air yeah. for about three minutes and you do breath of fire. Yeah. You're, you're just going. <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing this stuff and all of a sudden my mind just starts, my mind just transported and I started seeing like crazy lights and I was seeing like gods and, and just weird shit. And I was just like, what the hell is going on here? Right. Yeah. And, um, but one thing I, one thing I really saw was I saw myself like running down the soccer field full tilt. Right. And, and I was just, I just saw like green grass, you know, the white silence and I'm just booking it and I could just feel myself like where the, and I was like, wow, where the fuck am I? Like I'm, I'm in, I'm in this crazy place. I haven't been in a long time. And, uh, again, I felt like a winner. I felt like, wow, this is, this is amazing. And I knew right away that this was it. Like this was it. I, I, I saw that vision 
I felt that. I felt that power. I felt that 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 fire. That 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 zone that I would feel when I was playing soccer or when I was playing basketball. And I said, "This is it. I need to know what this is." And I had another vision in that in that sense. I saw myself um, three years from that day, like who I would be hmm. and where I would be and what I would be doing. And I was like, and it was a vision that it didn't seem like it came from me hmm. because I never saw that. You know, like all my thoughts and all my, all my, all my, all the things that were going on in my mind were nothing like that vision. And I just knew that I had to stick with it because intuitively I saw what the movements were doing to my body. And I was like, well, if I do this and this, this is what I could do. And my mind is like, <laughs> my intuition just like went bang, expanded. Like, this is who I could be, mm-hmm. but I need to, I need to stick with it to see what it's about. Yeah. So I, um, I just like four days later, I went and got the book, the teacher training book, and I studied it for a year. And then I, I went and did the training. Crazy. And I just said, you know, I'm going to commit to it. And Damn. here I am. Damn. Yeah. Crazy story. So there's actually a little bit of evidence um, uh, just scientifically with breath work activating like a uh, release of like DMT uh, in your mind <laughs> yeah. and in your body and whatnot. Like, and so DMT, like it, it uh, I've no, literally nothing. Um, I've read made like a paper and a half on it. Um, literally just is a cognitive enhancer. Well, will we'll, we'll give you, um, enhanced sense of smell, enhanced sense of visualization, just enhanced, uh, enhanced stimulants. Like it is a, it can be an hallucinogenic drug, mm-hmm. um, plant-based if you want to take it that way, but the body also produces it. Um, so there's been a lot of evidence, um, and studies around that recently with, you know, getting, uh, people to activate that internally and getting, uh, I believe it's your, it's a hormonal system that releases it or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, have you oh, t- t- done any research in so that at all? Or? I think, okay. So I was, I was looking into it a little bit. I'm not too sure if this is correct, but, um, I think when you have an abundance of melatonin, yes, you're able to, um, you know, activate it. Mm-hmm. Right. So you have to take like, you have to take it on the regular. So my theory is, I mean, I haven't tried this theory yet. I might be right. I might be wrong, but I'm going to try it and see what happens. I'm going to maybe get on some melatonin pills and just kind of stack it. Yeah. So I might do it for like a week, two weeks, and then, then really just go into a powerful meditation and, and just like build it up in my system to mm-hmm. see if it really does anything. Mm-hmm. But, um, I mean, you can achieve, like, you don't really need, I don't think you don't really need, I think you can just achieve it very um, it depends if you do the meditation long enough, if you really let yourself go and surrender to it and you really do the work, like it be pr- like prior to going into the meditation, you can really just use the natural energy that's in there to kind of take you to that place. Yeah. It's a really weird place you get to. I know a lot of, um, you know, just in, in media, a lot of celebrities and figures have talked a lot about, uh, transcendental med- meditation and what that's done for them. I haven't even looked into it. I'm just a proponent of regular meditation. Do you know anything about that? Well, I don't really like know exactly. Um, like I think I'm assuming transcendental meditation is, um, when you, uh, just let the mind wander, right? Well, yeah, no, yeah. it's, it's, uh, tell me, you tell me about it and I'll tell you if I, I, I do because <laughs> Kundalini, Kundalini yoga does, there's so many different types of meditation. I've just been focusing totally. on, on just Kundalini yoga, but the, you know, if there's a transcendental, uh, just tell me about what you think it is. So I'll tell you if it's in the Kundalini yoga. <laughs> it's no, I think, I think it is. It's like, um, it's, it's coachable. So it's like, it's, it's led by an instructor. It can be led by an instructor, mm-hmm. taught by an instructor, and then took it on in private practice. Um, it's supposed to be just 20 minutes at the start of the day, 20 minutes at the end of the day. Okay. Um, and it's, uh, mantra based or sound based. So which like I'm thinking Kundalini right, right off the bat. Yeah. Um, but it's essentially you focus on that sound until it just becomes white noise. And then that's when you activate supposedly you get on the border of your conscious and your subconscious and you let your mind go. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know though. Anyway, so Ellen oh. and, uh, all these like, uh, P Diddy and all these guys are huge, uh, proponents of it. And I don't know anything about it. I think, um, so, so but it, it sounds like Kundalini to me. Yeah. So like, I mean, <clears throat> I think when you, when you, so in Kundalini yoga, you'll do a lot of different types of, there's so many different types of meditation. And, uh, the thing about kund- Kundalini yoga is that you're always directing the mind you know, and sometimes you're just letting the mind just sit, sit with itself and mm-hmm. just observing thoughts and just relaxing, cultivating with, awareness, cu- cultivating yeah. awareness. And I think, um, I think, um, when you can relax into a place where you can, um, just observe the mind and, and, and it tells you things, it, it just, it'll tell you, it'll give you ideas. It'll give you your intuition. It'll, it'll guide you. 
um, if you just kind of sit with it, things that you, if you can, if you have the ability to quiet the mind and you can actually sit with it, your body will tell you what you need to do. It'll say, you know what, you need to heal or you need to talk to this person, you know, totally. it'll just, and I think that might be transcendental. I don't know. I don't know. I've <laughs> I, don't, no I don't really, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really focus on, 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 all, on all the, there's just so much stuff out there that's hyped right now. Yeah. It's, it's super hype, but they, with the hype in, and the increased awareness, there's getting to be more studies and there's, mm-hmm. there's more research behind it and it's becoming less and less woo woo. You know, yeah. like I, you know, grew up in a super small community where there's tons of, you know, old school guys and hippies and yeah. I, I would kind of get taught this stuff and be like, Oh yeah, like whatever old man. And then now it's weird. I am kind of gravitating towards it. And science is kind of proving a lot of these things to be true, which is really cool. Um, but I want to switch gears here. I want to, yeah. I want to, I want to ask you, um, about, You've talked with me a little bit about leveraging emotions, and uh, I'm really, really interested in that because, you know, I'm a I'm an emotional guy. <laughs> you know, I don't know how else to put that. Like I, um, I'm very, um, I don't want to say emotional, but like mm. kind of a, like I, I feel a lot. And I try to be very, very conscious of that. Now I'm, mm. you know, through the years, got very good at suppressing emotions and suppressing feelings and suppressing experiences. Um, and so when you start talking about leveraging emotions a little bit, I'm like, oh, hold on, my ears perk up a little bit. Yeah. How do, how do you leverage emotions? What emotions can you leverage? I, I think so. Like what I love about what I love about Kundalini Yoga is that you can create these states, mm-hmm. you know. And I think when we step away from like, uh, like when we step away from like going like seeing like seeing stars and 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 like focusing on tripping out and you actually just forget all about all that stuff and you just go into like the emotions like how can i create these different states of emotions and you know i think in life what what kundalini yoga it's designed for householders people who have to lead people who have to manage assets and resources people that need to go to war Mm -hmm. um have families you know raise families and and uh marriage things like that and um those are all different things. You have to wear different hats. You have to, and, and think of a hat, think of an emotion as a hat or, or even a pair of glasses, a lens, right? Mm. When you wear or when you, when you, when you have, when you're in a certain emotional state, you perceive that world through that emotional state, right? But sometimes that emotional state you in is not the emotional state you need to be in. You need to be in something different, right? So Totally. We've all, we've all know that feeling where I'm yeah. feeling one way, but I need to feel another way right now. Exactly. So where Kundalini is, is, is amazing is that it teaches you how to shift gears fast. So it's not about going to a yoga studio and doing like a whole 30 minutes, 40 minute meditation. It's just about what can I do in three minutes that can give me this emotional state? Mm-hmm. What can I do in 10 minutes that will give me enough energy to handle this situation, right? So... So what we do is what I do, what I do on a daily, like what I do on a daily basis is I kind of structure my, the things that I have to do based around who I need to be. Right. So I don't say like, that's interesting. So let's say if I have to do a lot of creative writing or if I have to like learn how to write and and, and I have to create content and I have to um, be creative, then I might take this meditation that works on my creativity and the way I speak and the way I talk and, and, or if I need to be a little bit more like of a leader and I need to really look at, look at uh, the people in my life uh, and what their skills are, what they bring to the table and how I can manage these resources, I might do a meditation for leadership, hmm. right? And that'll give me the mindset and the emotional state of a leader. Hmm. So then, so anything where I have to talk with people or I have to, you know, lead with people or I have to organize, then I might take this mindset on and I might plan my, I might plan my day and all those things that I need to do under that emotional state. Wow. Talk about enhancing your yeah. abilities. Yeah. So uh, our, sorry, our, 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 another one, our, another one that I really like is, is grit, like willpower, grit. Like when I have the to, best. when I have to do the things that I don't want to do, yes. but I really need to direct my mind to do it. And and I need to focus. I need to dial in on just those things. So I got to create tunnel vision. So I don't let anything come into my domain. Of my, uh, my, uh, I don't let anything come into my awareness. Yeah. So I'll focus my, my vision so, so, so tight that nothing can come into it. So I can, only, so I can get these things done. So I'm not wasting my energy, my mental bandwidth, and other things. Wow. So you're not wasting your mental bandwidth. That is powerful. How do you create that tunnel vision through like what type of meditations or, or uh, movements do you do to create that tunnel vision? Okay. So there's this one thing called uh, meditation called uh, to increase your caliber. So it, it looks like this. You're, you're, you basically yeah. have your, 
your arms out yeah. like this, wrap the fist, and you stare, you stare down the gun sights, right? You inhale for five. Like you're holding a gun. Yeah, you inhale for five. You stare at the V. Mm-hmm. Then you exhale for five, and you hold the breath as long as you can, right? Then you inhale for five after when you need to. Then you exhale for five, and you hold the breath as long as you can. How tense are you? Well, as the longer you hold it, you have to do this for about 11 minutes, right? 11 minutes. But you can do it in three minutes can give you, for, for me, three minutes of this meditation can quickly adjust my psyche. Mm. So I can get about four to six hours of just pure focus in wow. three minutes. Wow. So I had this one, I had this one girl, uh, one client, she was, um, she needed to focus because her mind, her mind kept wandering and it wasn't that it, she wasn't focused, but she just had a lot of creative ideas inside of her. And when she had all these, think of them as little seeds, right? Oh yeah. I know the feeling. It's the little seeds. And then, but the thing is when these seeds are growing on their own, you know, they're, they're taking the mental resources of the mind, right? So she needed to kind of put those seeds out so that she can focus her energy at, at, at whatever the task, the task she's doing. Hand, just, yeah. It might be something so simple, but for some people, you know, doing a simple task is really hard. You know, like they can't, they can't even muster up, you know, their concentration and focus on it. Mm-hmm. So by doing this under pressure, mm-hmm. you reset the, the, you send signals into the nervous system and the nervous system goes, mm-hmm. let's focus. And then, mm-hmm. and it, it puts you under pressure and it just says, okay, you need to, you need to worry about what's going on in front of you. So okay, that, yeah, that's how I would adjust it. Okay, cool. So there's a, there's a ton of things that I wanted to jump in there on. Yeah. But the thing that makes me, uh, you know, jump the most is every time when you're doing these movements, mm-hmm. you're a lot of the times you're, I mean, me personally, like I'm eyes closed, uh, tongue to the top of the uh, to the roof of the mouth, and you know, focusing uh, essentially to the third eye. Mm-hmm. What is that doing? Because to me, it feels like it's just triangulating. It feels like it's it's taking energy and throwing it in a circle. That's how I felt it. Mm. That's what, that was my experience. And I, I don't know what that tangibly means, but what's the purpose of activating uh, uh, the navel and these other movements that you teach uh, to, as you're doing these movements, what purpose does that serve? What's the purpose of the movements? Like, well, no, not the movements itself, but like, for instance, if I'm in, if I'm, if I am holding a pose, mm-hmm. I don't feel as much or I don't get the enhanced effects versus if I like uh, contract the navel and I focus in uh, tongue to the top of the roof of the mouth. Oh, what's like the that. purpose of it all? What's the purpose of all of that together working okay, in a way? Okay, so what Kundalini Yoga does is it teaches you a lot of different, you have a lot of different focal points, right? Mm-hmm. Each each point will uh, is to correct the flow of energy, you know? So when you're concentrating on your navel, you know, you're realigning your pelvic your pelvis and you're elongating your spine. You're making mm-hmm. your, t- your spine tall and straight. When you, um, when you're looking up at your drishti or your nose or your third eye, you're engaging your optical nerve. So you're actually kind of creating, um, it's called the golden chain. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it's not called the golden chain. It's called the silver cord and you activate the flow of energy up the spine all mm-hmm. the way up into the crown chakra. It's almost like a current, mm-hmm. like a wire, you know? And, um, by focusing on all these things, uh, under pressure, you're teaching yourself to to concentrate under pressure and doing a lot of things. So you get used to doing a lot of things under pressure. So by the time you you go out into the real, you know, you go out and you do your day, you, you your mind has just been expanded, right? Mm-hmm. And you've just tested it and you've just exercised the mind and the body very intensely, um, you know, within yourself. So it's almost like you're increasing your mental container while at the same time unloading garbage. Mm-hmm. It's all- You've, you've put it to me before as, and maybe you can expand on this a little bit, but as creating an abundance mindset, because I'm someone that has the exact opposite. Like I see every resource is scarce. So I try to make the most out of it. Like whether that's time, whether that's energy. And you've said before to me in, in teachings to this breath work and this creative, that focal point creates a, uh, an abundance mindset where things are plentiful. Mm-hmm. That was very powerful for me. I don't know if I've gotten that fully yet, but what does that mean? Well, I think, um, so when you're going back to kind of leveraging emotions, I think that when you are in a really, really happy place, all you see is the good in everything. It's true. Right. Yeah. And, um, so when you can constantly create that state, that state of awareness, that state of consciousness where, you know, you're like, this is joy, this is love, this is victory. You know, you, all you see is the good in people. All you see the good. All you see is the good in a situation. 
no matter what. Something might fall apart in front of you, but you'll be like, okay, that fell apart, but you're in a good mood. So it's like, I don't uh, really, I don't, I don't, I don't really give a shit. That's, he cut me off, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're in a good mood and you're like, okay, well, what did I learn from that? But that's, but then if you're in a bad mood, you're like, man, fuck that. You know what I mean? You're going to be like, that sucks. <laughs> and you're like, are you going to be angry? You want to throw some, you know, you want to yeah. fight or something? You're going to do whatever you want to do. But when you have, um, when you have the ability to see the good in everything, you always have an option, you know, like, I mean, like, even as, um, like Yogi Bhajan says, if you can't see God in all, you can't see God at all. Right. And it means that like, it means that if you can't see the creative potential of something or, uh, or someone and all you see is the negative in them, like, you know, like you're just, you're basically just hitting a wall. Like, you know, like, uh, like, um, like a player, like a, like a player. Like I used to go into sports sometimes with a lot of ego and I'd see other players on the court and I'd be like, man, I'm better than that dude. I'm better than that dude. But, and I'd just be like, I'd be like, I would be like, I'm just going to play better. I'm just going to play good and, you know, sh- you know, do my thing. But if I'd actually gone on, went into the court with a mindset of like, what are they good at and how can I use that talent? You know, mm. like, where is their creative potential? What is, where is their God? You know, um, that's an abundance mindset, you wow. know, because it gives me more options, you know, like, how can I make them better? How can I make the team better? And then, yeah. and then the coaches will look at you and I'm like, wow. You know, he's playing with a different type of mindset than I'm the shit, you know, like totally like I'm competing against these guys. Right. That's so a different type of player. Exactly. So even almost going to like service, like how can I make going into a game? If you go into a game situation, like, you know, I'm the man, you know, you're going to be limited to like, oh, am I going to miss a shot or is the coach going to pull me if I do this? But if you go into the mindset, like, how can I make my team better? How can I make it so enjoyable? Like, I know I can light these guys up you know, on, in a pickup game, but how can I make, get my other teammates involved? So the frequency, there's a better frequency in the game. Hmm. You got to play with like, um, like an abundance mindset, like, wow, you know, like very, a service. Very you like, see, you see the opportunities and the potential in other people. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have way more options mm-hmm. because you're looking at it that way. You're not looking at it from a closed mind. You're not looking at it as, Oh, you know, I can either shoot or I can drive. You're looking at it as well. You know, there's 18 different angles here now because these are all capable players on my team and, and yeah. I can use them in a way. So, to reiterate you just because i want to get you go ahead sorry go ahead uh, you, when you kind of have that mindset and that flow yes you can manage a lot more things when you approach it from a vision of service and how can i make provide value to them and how could they provide value to me like it'll it'll you'll have always have more options and you'll always be able to maintain those options in your head because it's just a higher it's a higher emotion it's a higher vibrational space and the mind can easily connect with that that's so fucking cool, man. That's like the thesis behind my whole like goddamn life. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. right? Like, I mean, it's definitely the thesis behind, you know, what we got going on over here with this podcast and all that stuff. But um just because it, we came to it naturally, it's just like it it feels good. It feels good. Yeah. Creating a community feels good. Giving opportunities feels good. Like, you know, we're just we're humans trying to fulfill your fulfill our needs. And you you have found a way to fulfill your needs through this practice and and we're finding a way to fulfill our needs you know through building community and giving opportunity and these Mm. things like that um and again it's all just we're trying to find the best way to navigate and i think you have to come to a certain level where it doesn't become about money or doesn't become about Mm. this or material or that and that's kind of a a level of consciousness consciousness and experience you need to get to but i wanted to go back because i need to make sure i get this concept sure an abundance mindset so you're seeing, uh, you say you're seeing the God in other people. Yeah. In all, in all things. Yeah. And what you mean by that is not God is in Jesus or God is in this. You're saying seeing the creative potential in other yeah. living entities. Creativity, the way it moves through time and space. So seeing what this person could be able to do. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. like Very cool. Like we have a mantra called HUD and it's the, it's called the one creative aspect of God. And when you chant the mantra over and over and over again, it's supposed to move you through any block. So if you're staring at a problem and you just don't know how to approach the problem, it means that your mind, your, your lens that you are using to view this problem, it's not working, mm-hmm. right? It's block mm-hmm. and you might be tired. You might be fatigued or you're your template of consciousness is just not seeing it. So you need to be able to break that template or break that, 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 that stalemate. So when you chant the mantra HUD, it opens up your creativity. So you're able to look at that, that problem from a different angle, Mm -hmm. a very flowing angle, higher, your higher self. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Oh, I can do this now. I can, I can, I can shift this. It expands your awareness around the problem and absorbs it. And you can see different angles. 
So it's your, you tap into your creativity. I mean, you know, like creation. Yeah. No. And that's what we're all here to do is create things. In whatever form that yeah. may take. Yeah, very cool. It also just through the different chants and song or melody or whatever you want to put it, you it's almost like you create context around the world. Like, so, you know, after our sessions, I'll, you know, I have to, it, with this podcast or uh, in business, there's, I have to talk to a lot of people that are uh, much more quote unquote powerful or um, established or um, just positioned in this world uh, mm. than, you know, myself as a young person, or at least that's, you know, what I've been told. And so for me, it kind of created an equilibrium of like, <clears throat> no, 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 like that's a human with a voice and a body. I'm a human with a voice and a body. And I just, you know, the, the minds that I had coming out of it is like, well, you know, my voice is feeling very strong. Mm -hmm. And just that simple, you know, I feel as if I have vibrations that can match yours now. Yeah. Like it's just a feeling of power in a weird way and a feeling of, uh, it's almost as if I feel like I just got a voting right for the first time. I finally have a, a mm -hmm. way to speak and a, and a way to be activated. And then that's one thing. I mean, it's not just, doesn't just last for the end of the day. It lasts mm -hmm. for couple days you yeah. know like it lasts i mean depending on how hard you go or how long you go for mm -hmm. you know that that's a lasting effect where you're like no 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 like i still got the juice like that's <laughs> yeah, yeah like yeah. i don't know how else to put it man it's just like i got the juice for a couple days yeah. and i can and i can go and i can execute and i can talk and i can speak and i can communicate you know, whether that's from being a host or being a coach or uh you know being an advisor or whatever it may be it's just oh now my ability to communicate is enhanced through mm -hmm. i don't know how but it is yeah and obviously there is science behind Behind that and there is research behind that but for me anecdotal evidence is enough when it's me yeah so if i can go and try something and i'm like okay that worked once let's go try it again yeah okay it worked another time okay let's just go try it one more time <laughs> and then i'll say maybe it works right yeah. and you go you try it a third time and it works you're like holy shit yeah and how does this work so you know i'm a busy guy i got tons of stuff going on but i want those powers and i want that awareness and that feeling of alertness constantly like it's mm -hmm. addicting it's super addicting you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. you went full you dove into yeah. that shit 100 percent, right so how what's the i don't want to say minimal amount i can do but what is the you know baseline just to like not feel you know asleep in a way because when you don't do this stuff for a while you kind of feel yeah. asleep yeah you lose it you lose it like um i think okay so so all the power, like all the, I think all the problems and all the issues that lie in today's society, you can just trace it back to the nervous system, the glands and the organs, right? Mm -hmm. The endocrine system, the nervous system. I mean, they play a big role in our emotional state. And, and um, the trick is to really just uh, do the things that you, I would say three to, three to five minutes a day. Th wow. Three to 10 minutes a day of just doing the right things. Um, I would say working on the navel chakra, that, gets, that gives you power. Mm -hmm. That gives you, that gives you grit. But you can chant mantra all day in your head, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like I was telling you to chant Wahi Guru, Wahi mm -hmm. Guru. But if you just chant that in your head, that's so powerful in itself that yeah. that'll it'll it'll just it'll just connect you, like connect you mind body. You'll feel your body get taller and stronger. Yeah. You'll, that same type of awareness that we that we did in that one hour session, you could just chant that for ten minutes on your walk, yeah. and you'll get that type of you'll get the exact same type of awareness by chanting that than doing it by then doing a 90 minute session. So I want to be clear here. It's not just like, see awareness is like, you know, one of these terms, like, Oh, like, spatial awareness, like physical, like physical awareness, yeah, like, like your reality, like your reality, what is going on in your head, but also what is going on in their head, what is going on around you? Like, like what are the tangible bodies in this room? How are they moving? How are they feeling? Things like this. Yeah. Right? It's expanded. It's a really weird feeling, man. So really, if you're, uh, if you're anyone that plays in high pressure situations and you need to make decisions, Mm. it's a weird feeling like if you're a point guard on a team and you know you're coming from a session or you've, you've 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 done something to activate that awareness and then it's almost like you see a pick and roll coming or you see yeah. you see the angle for a pass or you see the pass that needs to be made and it's just kind of like the game slows down a little bit a lot of you know players are you know in that early stage that 10 to 16 year old mm. the game is just so quick so quick so quick and as coaches it's just like you need to slow the game down how do you slow the game down and it's just like uh i don't know and now as an adult trying these you know different mm. methods and, and you know slowing my body down but to be quicker like i always say um you know 
uh, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Yeah. And that's something you get to that level of awareness, right? You can't really be smooth if you don't know what's yeah. going on around you, right? It, it's a totally crazy feeling. You know when you see those players that are just, um, you know, they're not the most athletic, but they're just actually, they're actually, you just see them kind of gracefully move through the field or through the court. And they just like, they just, just with their presence and just with their mind, they, yeah. they just control the flow of the game. They're not really doing any, and you're just like, do you even do anything? <laughs> but those are the guys that are just like, they're just operating on a different level. They're just, they know how to use the floor. They know, they see the momentum. They can see the play develop before it even happens. And mm-hmm. that's your intuition. And your intuition is, in Kundalini Yoga, all we do is, is, in, is focus around our intuition. Like we, we, everything we do enhances our intuition. So when we do a Kriya, like Kriya is like a yoga set. Uh, Kriya is designed to bring the soul forward, bring to raise the energy. And then what happens is the soul um, takes over, takes over the body. So the soul comes up and says, hey, subconscious, get the fuck out of the way, right? <laughs> you're, you're on the bench today, but I'm taking over. So the soul comes in and says, hey, let's, let's, let's start driving, right? And then when the, soul, when the soul drives, when the soul, whatever you think of when you're in that higher vibrational state is a manifestation of the soul, right? So if you're like, I want to go right, instead of left there's you'll just do it the soul will automatically know what to do you don't miss right you don't miss but when you have um when you're when your subconscious is driving you might say should i go right should i go left and then in between like i don't know there's that duality Mm -hmm. and that's where you get injured or that's where you make mistakes Mm -hmm. because you don't fully commit to one thing you don't fully commit and you don't you don't execute and then you're just and you're and it causes frustration and it causes it you're paralyzed in a way you're paralyzed and you don't move forward. You don't create, you don't manifest. You're not, you're not growing, mm-hmm. you know, you're, and, and, and when I say growing, you're not moving in that particular situation. So, but when you, when you raise the energy, you can feel your body so confidently and so gracefully that you know that if I can do a leaner and jump back and do that shot, because you can feel your body, you have so much confidence in your physical ability. So it's almost like you become graceful. So there's mm-hmm. no duality that you're not, you're not worried about missing the shot because you, you can feel your body so intensely that you're like, yeah, I'm going to hit the shot easily. Mm-hmm. So you just do, you just execute. There's no duality in between. Yeah. He hasn't said it, but it's called the zone. Yeah. The <laughs> That's zone. what he's trying to say. Like, yeah, you know, it's a zone. It's just that mental. It's it, so hard to get into, but you find a way to get into it. And, and, you know, as players or even as, as people, you get into flow states. You're like, how the fuck did I get into that flow state, right? Yeah. And how do I get back to that flow state? Well, it's just this. I know I always thought of it as like, oh, it's just this random sequence of events that just kind of made me get into this. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I don't a, know. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. <laughs> it's like, how did I? I don't know how I did that. It just happened. Dude, you know. That's man. That's so funny that you said that because um, I remember just I remember like when I stopped playing sports, that was the biggest. Like it was it was hard for me because I was like, how can I find that state? I wasn't spiritual at the time. I didn't. I didn't really know anything about like meditation and, 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 you know, you know, um, you know, getting to that higher power. I just, it was just like somebody missing that, that flow state. Cause yeah. I knew what that state was yeah. when time slows you down. Tasted and, it, yeah. yeah. And I was like, and I, that was why I didn't, that was all I did was just get in the flow state, play sports. And that's, and I didn't worry about school. All I wanted to do was have fun. And, uh, when I lost that connection, I lost that, that connection kind of spilled out into my, to my reality. Like, you know, I wasn't, I couldn't, I did, I forgot what it was like to be in that flow state. And then, and I, I remember asking, like I asking some higher power, like I want that connection. I want it. I want it. I want it. And then, uh, I found Kundalini yoga and it was just like, Oh, it gave it to me. It gave it to me. So you found a way to navigate that depression. Yeah. Almost. Right. And that's, so once you do, so, so for instance, once you do, you activate and you kind of go into these movements and you, you know, maybe taste a little bit, what changes in your mind to go from being in a depressed state to being in a growth state? So what changes in my mind? Um, I think when I'm, when I'm in, when I'm doing the Kundalini yoga, um, our postures, well, our body carries a lot of trauma, right? Mm-hmm. So when I go into my, my, my set, I know that it's like going into a movie theater. I'm going to watch my, Sorry. Mo- it's like when I go into my body, it's, <laughs> yeah. like, it's like going into, it's like, it's like, okay, what am I going to, it's like going into a movie. Okay. Like, what am I going to see today? What, where's the new story? What's going to be told? Interesting. So I go into my body and a lot of people are talking about observing the mind and then not being attached to your thoughts. I mean, like, I just like, I'm like, I'm just like, <laughs> fuck all that shit. No, I'm just like, no, I'm going to go to the mind and I'm going to move all this trauma outside of my body and I'm going to witness it. I'm going to smell my own shit. Like, I'm going to be like, you know, that saying, you know, that saying, 
you know your shit doesn't stink you want to see yeah what is what is stinking inside of you it's like sweeping a room and the dust comes up yeah. you want to see the dirt it comes up okay boom i see it okay it goes away yeah. like fuck you and fuck you and it goes away <laughs> and i and then i and then i do it another day no oh, it's still it's still there it's still in the background okay boom get it do it a third day in my career on my set it's gone i don't see it anymore yeah so i begin to um i don't know if that's even transcendental medicine i don't know yeah whatever a- anyways i begin to just feel i begin to go into my body and i know i do the mantra i do the meditation while i'm doing these postures like mentally vibrating mantra and everything just comes up everything comes up and i just let it move and all i'm doing is moving the emotions moving the energy creating that space and i just witness myself and i experience myself and then eventually Mm, those emotions stop coming up and it's just clear it's just mm. quiet and then it starts and then it starts turning into ideas and, and, right. and, and things that I want to do things that I'm passionate about like you know go talk to this person and go work with this person and you know and it's all my creativity starts coming out mm-hmm. when I move the when I move the trauma I always have this like internal uh, battle with myself because if I go into these states or meditative states I'll I'll achieve just white space for a while a minute or two minutes i don't really know what Mm -hmm. time but it seems like that and then as soon as that's gone i would just get these sparks and these like oh shit that's what i should have done or that's what i should do or that's what i need to do this or this and then all these just these things that i hadn't thought of or connections that i hadn't made just kind of pop up pop up and i'm always like i'm in this and maybe i'm only like two three minutes into my meditation and i'm like fuck i need to write this down you know, and I'm just like, okay, wait, no, no, stay, just stay here, just stay here, just stay <laughs> yeah. here. And I always have this like battle, like, well, no, don't, don't lose that shit because that shit's good. And then yeah. I'll go into this like little spiral. But when you finish your um, practices or movement, you always say, stay inside. Yeah. Why and what does that mean? Well, I think um, when I say stay inside, I say stay inside because after you, you know, you see in a lot of yoga studios, um, when people do something very intense, you know, and the first thing they're doing is reaching for their water, like, yeah. oh, it's so intense. They're like, oh, you know, and they're moving and they're, and they're just creating all these, reinforcing these bad habits after something hard happens, mm. or after they do some physical um, activity. And I'm just like, so I'm kind of like, once you uh, release that energy and that flow in your body, you sit with it and you, and you feel it move and you feel it move and you're like, oh, and you just go deep into it. And in that place, there's this, there's this knowledge and wisdom. Mm-hmm. It's 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 that place where your intuition is so loud and so clear. Because you know when you're in that state and you release it, you're not thinking about shit. No. It's fucking empty. It's vast. You experience your vastness. And in that vastness is where you can you can ask your questions. Mm-hmm. You can you can you can get your downloads or you can plant a seed in that vastness and watch it flourish and grow into something. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of power in that space. Mm-hmm. And um, Kundalini gives you that space. It mm-hmm. gives you that like, whoa, what do I want to do with this space? When I tell you to stay inside, it's just so that you, you're not doing any, you're not reinforcing any bad habits. You're just sitting with that, that it's called Shunya. Mm. Shunya is a place where you zero out. Where does it come from? Where does that word come from? Shunya comes from, well, this lineage, Kundalini yeah. Yoga. Yeah. And, um, and, um. That's a very interesting word. Yeah. It's when you, it's when you, it's when you, it's when you, when I'll ask you to, sometimes I'll ask you to inhale, suspend the breath and hold the breath and you just kind of zero out. Well, when you become zero, you become nothing, right? Mm-hmm. And then you just, you just feel, you feel your vastness, you feel your God, you know? That's what I think that box breathing is for me. Like right in that last couple of minutes, I kind of get that a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I think it's just more oxygen to the brain. I don't, I don't know what it is like physiologically. I call that though. I just coined it. I've never even said this out loud, but I I always call it internally. I'm trying to get to that last lap, like that last lap theory, mm-hmm. where it's just like you're at the point of exhaustion, and you're not just stopping and putting your hands on your knees. You know, like maybe you've done the last sprint or you've done the last mm-hmm. set or whatever your mode of exercise is, and then you slow pace, but you still stay there. Mm-hmm. You don't completely uh, and just relax yourself you kind of stay in that, like there's a high intensity burn and it just comes down a bit, but you don't turn it off. No. And uh, there's just something that happens there, at least for me mentally, in that spot where it's almost like you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor a little bit, right? Mm. But the pain's not gone. Like the pain is is still there in a yeah. way. Like if you're holding a pose and then, and then you, maybe you throw your arms down or whatever, but you're still tight, you're still engaged. And you're like, oh shit, what is that? Mm. It's just this weird 
weird state I, i'm so curious i'd love to like actually like i actually want to get like a neuroscientist on here and be like what is happening <laughs> yeah. in this situation what's yeah. happening in this situation and try to get some answers but for the time being man like shit i'm just exploring and yeah. i think that's the the biggest point uh for me and for you too like you like i mean geez how much are you still learning now probably a ton hey it's 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 there's so much information that i'm learning and like uh it's kind of a new it's a it's a new journey for myself you know i'm trying to learn how to be a teacher and i'm trying to learn how to be like you know a good student and uh and just you know integrating all these teachings into into my life and you know there was a time where i didn't want to get up in front of people and teach like i was i was scared shitless right i was just like holy cow and and then now it's kind of like you know, you learn how to communicate a little better. You learn how to, you know, teach with confidence and you learn how to connect with people. And uh, this yoga really, it's not just a yoga for fitness. It's not about, it's not about, um, you know, having, you know, crazy abs or doing handstands. It's really just about connecting with your higher self and connecting, you know, with people and elevating people right. and, and trying to get people to a higher level of consciousness. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, you know, it's and that's really what it is. It's like there's nothing like honestly, I I used to think like like one of the things I learned through this practice was was uh, I had this one experience where um I helped this one girl and um we did a meditation and the meditation was called a meditation for a calm heart. And then after she told me that uh she was she was in a situation with with, with one of her friends and she was going to send an email and uh and uh but she decided not to send the email because that meditation allowed her to look at the situation with a calm heart, you know, mm-hmm. instead of like an angry heart. And then she came up to me and she started kind of, you know, telling me about, you know, her situation. And I was kind of like, and she's like, thank you for, for, for that meditation. I was just like, well, I didn't really do anything. It was you who did it. It was the teachings. Right. But I remember just feeling like so grateful. And like, I, that was like the first time I'd actually experienced, you know, service, like helping, serving, helping someone. I actually was like, you know, and it, it felt different experiencing that than, you know, in that setting, in that, in that setting than it would be if I was helping someone else on the street or it was, it was just a little different. And I got this tremendous high from it. It was such a crazy high. And once I achieved that high, I was like, all of a sudden my, my intuition, my vision. And when I say intuition, my ability to see into the future, not saying like a psychic, but like, let's say bring it back to like a basketball player playing in a game, my ability to read the play became even clearer and stronger. So, and I learned that the more people that I can help, the more the universe gives me in vision and clarity and focus. Mm -hmm. And, and Kundalini gives you the ability to sharpen. It sharpens your ability to sense emotion, to understand what emotion does and how to see through these different lenses. Yeah. You know, that's a great fucking summary. Yeah. Um, dude, we've gone over for sure. I said 45 minutes. I don't know where we're at, but yeah. Um, dude, clarity, Clarity, yeah. Um, at the end of the day, is what it brings, and the ability and just the tools to feel emotions, see emotions, and create awareness, create space, um, and create living. Like a lot of the times, you know, you're not living. You know, you're just mm. you're going through the motions. And if you're looking for a way to get out of the motions, like fuck, like this is kind of it. Yeah. Um, so with that, dude, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate that. So you do a ton of private work. You do work at studios. Like where can people reach you if they want to uh, get at you for sessions or if they want to just, uh, are your DMs open? Can people shoot, shoot yeah, you messages? Yeah, you can shoot me a, you can shoot me a, a DM on uh, Instagram. My Instagram is Kundalini Tech, K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I-T-E-C-H. Quick little um, rhyme right there. <laughs> uh, you can also, uh, I'm starting a YouTube channel oh, pretty yeah. soon. So I'm going to be dropping a lot of content about- Sweet. You know, like simple, simple meditation, simple things, uh, pe- things that people can do to just kind of get in the zone. Um, I'm excited about that. Um, I also got a website that's dropping soon. Hell yeah. KundaliniTech.com. You've been busy. Yeah. So uh, you can find me at Oxygen Yoga and Fitness in the West End. Um, it's on uh, it's on Denman and Harl Street. I teach Saturdays at 115, Wednesdays at 6, and that's kind of my main studio. Um. Yeah, that's where you can find me. Hell so. yeah, bro! Awesome. Well, dude, I appreciate you uh, coming in and uh, shedding some light and just continuing to uh, to learn and grow and, and help others. That's what it's all about, bro. Yeah, sweet, sweet. Awesome. Thank you, Neil. Until next time, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. All right, peace. Bang bang.